Hi guys, welcome to week two of the War of Art, Break Through the Blocks and When You're in of Inner Creative Battles by Stephen Pressfield. Um, this is just a way for us to help understand our internal workings and a lot of what stops us from getting up and making art is the fact that um, we have some mental blocks. So this week was really interesting. Um, I want to say that if you haven't already purchased The War of Art, I do recommend you go out and, and purchase it for yourself so that you can read through. Um, we're just going to be going over some footnotes that I've made. And also, uh, I don't always agree with the things that I'm reading, just as you may not always agree with the things that you're reading, but it's still interesting to read it, see somebody's perspective. Um, and um, I did choose this book because I do think it has a valuable information in it. So if you are still here, continue on with me and we have read through pages 12, 12 through 25. And we started out with um, this page right here, resistance is infallible. Um, and Stephen is saying that our resistance, so for those of you just joining, resistance is in Stephen's words, what stops a lot of us from being creative. And that is like, you know, when you're sitting on the couch and you're like, oh, I should really get up and go to the gym and I don't do it. Or man, I should really get up and do that thing I've been meaning to do. And you don't do it. That's what Stephen is uh, saying resistance is. So resistance will unfailingly point true north, meaning that the calling or action it most wants us to most wants to stop us from doing is probably what we should be doing. And this is a really interesting rule of thumb because um, the thing that you're most scared of, the thing that you're, you're most avoiding is probably the thing that's going to be the most rewarding. And so Stephen's saying, let's use this feeling as a compass and we can navigate by how resistant we are by letting it guide us to the, the calling or action that we must follow before all others. And then I love to write in my books. If you're just joining me, you'll see I love to write my notes in my books, um, which is why I like hard copies rather than e-copies personally. But as rule of thumb is the more important a call or action is to our soul's evolution, the more resistance we will feel towards pursuing it. Um, and this has actually hit home with me in a lot of ways because not only do I have some projects brewing that I'm resistant to working on or I'm finding avoidant behavior to working on, um, I also have accomplishments and projects that I've completed that I pushed through this feeling of resistance and ended up being really fruitfully rewarded. Um, so for example, I teach painting workshops and I used to be very scared about speaking in front of people and saying my opinions and things like that. Uh, and even my uh, confidence in my ability to instruct people on how to do something in a way that's really understandable and relatable. I wasn't just confident, but I've started to teach in spite of all that. And I started to grow my business in spite of all that. And now I'm rewarded with people just asking me to teach workshops. Um, and so I, I feel very blessed that I was able to, you know, just put my head down and work through all that. And so there is an example of something I was extremely resistant to, to the point to where like I would have anxiety and I would like cry before I went and taught every workshop, which is kind of embarrassing to say, but I think it's a human thing to say and I think it's a normal thing. So um, I'm not embarrassed by that fact because just because I had those feelings, I still went out and did it and I did some, I've gained some really cool skills from that and confidence in myself. 
Um, so my work on my business, you know, just the day to day drudgery of the things that you don't think about when you're starting a business, um, you know, those are, you know, you have to carve out the time to get stuff like that done. So it takes a lot of effort. Um, I've been really rewarded with that, um, producing new products, experimenting, um, the harder it is to get started and get going, the more rewarding it's going to be once you actually accomplish it. Um, your diligence will pay off. Um, you're going to be proud of yourself. You're going to get more knowledge. You're going to get more skills, all of that stuff. So, um, resistance is infallible is Steven's note on this. And again, just using that thing that you're really resistant to doing as a, okay, now this is the hard and fast rule where the thing that I most don't want to do is the thing that I actually have to get up and do. And now I'm sitting here thinking about how I didn't get up and work out this morning. So guess what? Guess who's going to have to do that before she goes to bed, right? The thing that you're most resistant about, staying healthy, body, mind, spirit, right? I don't care if I watch Netflix for four hours as long as I get my hit list done. But what you guys don't know is I have a pretty long hit list of things to do. So resistance is universal. Um, we're wrong if we think we're the only ones struggling with resistance. Everyone who has a body experiences resistance. Just as I said, like, don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. Like, people who go out and do really cool things, they still feel the same things. They still feel the same, you know, n negative feelings. And um, they just get up and go out and do it. Um, here we have resistance never sleeps. Henry Fonda was still throwing up. Wait, Henry Fonda was still throwing up before each stage performance, even when he was 75. In other words, fear doesn't go away. And that's what I'm saying, you guys. Like, I still teach workshops and I still have some anxiety about it, but I don't necessarily cry or have it as bad, right? Like, so the feeling can dull, um, but you still are going to have to make sure that you endure through those, right? Oh, we got Zandra in the chat. Hi, Zandra. Yo, I went live around two o'clock. So um, welcome. Glad you're here. Um, so back to this. Okay, so fear doesn't go away. The warrior and the artist live by the same code of necessity, which dictates that the battle must be fought anew every day. Yes. Yeah, so keep up that momentum. Um, so for me, hi, Kim. Welcome, Kim. Welcome, Zandra. Good to see you guys here. Um, so for me, uh, the fact that fear doesn't go away and that you have to fight through it new every single day, um, for me, it's, it's all about not breaking that momentum. Uh, Kim and Zandra are here now. They're going to remember uh, we did, what is it? Uh, well, this book, Steal Like an Artist. So when we were going through Steal Like an Artist, there was a recommendation in here to keep a journal of whatever task it is that you are working towards or whatever your daily practice that you want to have is. For me, it's all encompassing with my business. Um, for other people, it might be just their art practice. But what I do is I keep a journal and every single day for like the last 30 days now, I've done at least one thing for my art business. Um, there, there were days where I almost went to bed without doing something. And then I remembered, oh man, I didn't write anything in my little, my little book. I don't want to break the chain. So for me, that can be a way to keep up that momentum for me. It keeps a reminder. So I've really been enjoying doing that. I've been logging in that every day. Um, so keeping up the momentum and continuity with one task per day, it can just be 5, 10, 15 minutes a day, whatever it is, do your drawing practice, do your creative practice. Um, it can be a type of dance, it can be a type of visual art, it can be a type of literature, um, it can be a type of media that you're creating, whatever your creative endeavor is, um, woodworking, who knows, it's everything. I think you can make anything creative. Um, so my daily log does keep me motivated to not break the chain. Um, and so that's been really helpful for me. Zandra says in the chat, the journal is a great recommendation and she still hasn't done it. 
<laughs> well, time to get going, girl. <laughs> the next page. Um, oh, yeah, you guys, did you guys read the book? Uh, we were supposed to be reading 12 through 25. So right now we are on page 15, and it's Resistance Plays for Keeps. So Zandra and Kim are now here. They have the books, and they're reading along with me. So, y'all, it's page 15. So, the goal, so the, re, the goal of resistance is not to wound or disable. It aims to kill. It aims to stop you from doing that actual thing. Um, so it aims to stop you from doing the actual thing. And its target is so now when Steven is talking about resistance, he's talking about it as if it were an entity. Um, he was talking about it as if it had a mind of its own. And if you think about it, um, last week, I think I was talking about how a lot of mindfulness and behavior therapies will tell you whatever that negative thing in your head is to make it into a cartoon like Elmer Fudd or like, you know, Elmer Fudd chasing Daffy Duck or like the coyote chasing the roadrunner. Like it's silly. It's stupid. You're never going to win, dude, because I'm too fast. I'm the roadrunner. If you can think of resistance as an entity in that way um, while we're reading along, I think that will be really helpful. Um, Kim is saying, you thought, I thought you said to page 39. Yeah, I did say to page 39, you are correct, but I'm changing it to page 25 just because it was so much content. Um, it was just going to be a lot. So if you guys read to 39, awesome. You're ahead of the game. Um, you can, <laughs> but it was just going to be a lot for the hour that we have allotted. Sandra says she likes the Wiley Coyote idea. Good, I'm glad. So it's really nice. Think of yourself as a road runner. Just meet me, meet me. You know, you're trying to, he's trying to throw the TNT at you. He's trying to crush you with the rock, but you're too fast. You know the game. Resistance's goal is not to wound or disable. It aims to kill, but you're not going to let him get the best to you. So its target is the epicenter of our being, our genius, our soul, the unique and priceless gift that we were put on earth to give and that no one else has but us. I really needed to read this this week. I'm working on a very big project and I'm battling resistance every single day with my mindset. Excuse me. And, um, you know, I really needed to read this this week. This is um, a really good book for me right now. I am constantly just reaching for more. So the big project I'm working on is a six-week intensive course for painting for those of you out there in internet land, uh, quarantined at home. I want to be able to provide a service for you guys, and I am... I've got my outline and I'm really excited to get dived in and get to dive in. So I just needed to hear this, you know, our genius, our soul, the unique and priceless gift we were put on earth to give and that no one else has but us. Um, when I feel who am I to teach Zandra's here in the chat. I keep coming back to something Zandra said to me and she said, who are you not to teach? Right? Like, why would you hide that? Why would you not give that gift to the world? Right? Like, being able to make art accessible, which is what my business is all about. So, thank you, Zandra, for that. I often think of that. That was really kind. <laughs> and that, was, that really touches me. Um, so, I have a question for you guys. We've got Kim and Zandra in the chat. We've got a few other people here. Um, do you feel a drive to create and share something with the world? I know Kim has her art studio. She does really, really beautiful stained glass, and Kim teaches. So, I'm asking you, Zandra, Kim, anyone else out there, you know, do you feel a drive to create and share something with the world? Give me a yes in the chat if that's you. I would love to hear from you, and I would love to know that you also have a drive to share something. Um, I think it's really important that, you know, we're able to express ourselves while we're here. Um, now we're going over here. We're rolling over to page 16. Zandra in the chat says, ah, oh, of course. 
And Zondra also says she definitely has a drive to create. Sharing is a little more challenging. Yes, I understand. Sharing is very hard. Art is exposing yourself. Art is being vulnerable. And sharing that on top of just creating it is even more vulnerability. Um, however, I think that it is you know, important that once you feel some sense of confidence in what you're creating, that you can share it with a trusted friend who will then help you have more confidence. You know, another trusted creative, Zandra, I know you've been sharing your creations with me. Um, and, you know, it's really good to be sharing, sharing your creations. So if you need a place to share your art and have it be accepted gently and you want to see what other creatives have to say. I do have a Facebook group. It's Facebook or I'm sorry. It's creative club with Sari Luna on Facebook. Just um, go on there and put in a little application. There's no questions you have to fill out. I'm just going to accept you. It's a private group. Um, so it's just, we don't have any rules or anything because everybody's been very kind. So come on and join that group. Kim says she is always creating something. Sometimes it is just experimenting and she doesn't know how it will turn out. Kim, I hear you. I, I am constantly growing and evolving with my painting. I find it difficult sometimes to just stick with one style because my style is continuously evolving. I'm constantly experimenting with things. If I'm not experimenting on a painting, it's probably because I'm teaching. <laughs> um, Zandra says, I need to share my new Christmas paintings there. Yes, Zandra, put your paintings in the group, please. She, Zandra has my phone number, so she keeps texting me and I'm trying to get her to post them in the group. <laughs> because you do so good. And Kim, Kim shared a link to her art studio in the link. Um, she's got some really cool stuff. She even has a little shop and stuff. Um, she makes really cool stained glass jewelry and stuff. Zandra just doesn't Facebook much. That's okay, Zandra. Do, what, do whatever your heart desires. It's okay. I'm just trying to encourage you. <laughs> oh, but yes, your paintings are really good. So Zondra says she'll go check out Kim's shop. See, there's a reason to get onto Facebook. Go to the Creative Club. There's interesting stuff in there. <laughs> We've got a, um, another guy, Daniel Moore. Uh, he was a 3D artist, um, and he did, like, a lot more, like, technical stuff. Um, and he did a, a 3D sculpture of the Space Needle, and it looks like a photo. Uh, it's really cool. So check that out, too, while you're on there, Zondra. Um, resistance is fueled by fear. Again, we're back here to page 16. Also, um, please forgive me, Zandra. I know I'm kind of ragging on you a little bit. I'm just trying to tease. You know, I love you, girl. <laughs> um, resistance is fueled by fear. It has no strength on its own. Every ounce of juice it possesses comes straight from you. So I might add that your focus on the fear fuels it and makes it bigger. So anytime, um, I've been really working on this skill for, I've been really working on this skill. And honestly, it's just recently starting to pay off is that if I'm scared or upset about something that I immediately, I immediately need to drop it and go to something that makes me happy, whether it be, um, going for a run to, get that feeling out of my body and change my mind and focus on something else, whether it be to read a book, whether it be even to watch a funny show, um, just something to take your mind off whatever that negative feeling is will really help you to redirect. Um, so Zandra says, focus on, focus on the fear fuels it. And she said she spoke too soon that hurt. Yeah, no, trust me. I, I completely get it. And that's why I'm like speaking so directly to this because, you know, if, if you sit there and are freaking out about something and you're, you're in every fiber of your being is focused on it, guess what? You're going to continue to freak out about it. But if somehow you can distract yourself like a little kid, you know, just think of it like a little kid, kids freaking out, you know, about something they're scared and you're able to distract them. Hey, let's go do this because this always makes you happy. And then they immediately brighten up, treat yourself like a kid. You guys, it's, it's really cool. But yeah, so we feed resistance with our, we feed resistance power by our fear of it. 
master that fear and you can conquer resistance. So I, there was this uh, cute quote that I saw. It was, don't feed the fears. Um, so face them head on. So I have a question for you. Zondra says that that spoke to her. Let's see, Kim. Let's see if this speaks to you guys. What fear do you have? Huh? What's stopping you? What's that big thing that you want to do? And why are you afraid? Or what? what is it? And is that what you're afraid of? So what fear do you have? I have an example for you guys on how I completely kicked fear on one subject. You may have heard me talk about this before, but um, as some of you know, I live in Seattle and I actually live in the city. I used to live on the outskirts and I really enjoyed some activities that were in the city, but every time I went to go and drive, I was always trying to get a ride with somebody else because I didn't want to drive in Seattle. I was scared of driving in Seattle. So what did I do? I got a job making deliveries in Seattle. Yes, you heard me. I got a job making deliveries in Seattle. And this was about three years ago. And it only took me about six months to eight months before I stopped being like, actually, it wasn't even that long. It, it was very quick. Um, but I was also very scared of Seattle, but it, it went away pretty quick and only came back intermittently after that. And now it's three years later. I can drive anywhere I damn well please, and I'm not scared at all. I'm not scared of driving in Seattle. I have, I, and also, bonus, I no longer get any form of road rage. <laughs> so if you're afraid of something, face it head on. I was scared to drive in Seattle. And I was like, this is stupid. This is ridiculous. How do I get over this? And I was like, well, shit, I'm going to get deliveries and drive in Seattle. And, you know, it doesn't even freak me out when I can't find a parking spot anymore. I'll go around the block. It's no big deal. All right. Zondra says, fear is a major player in her music. And she's afraid of every song I write sounds the same and just has different lyrics. Well, Zondra, you are the Nickelback. Oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, Zondra. <laughs> Okay, I laughed too hard at my own joke there. Zandra, um, I think that if you are if you are concerned about having your music sound the same, I think that is the catalyst for you to have them become different. I think that if so in this case, like you being constantly worried about them being the same needs to that needs to rest. Um, a lot of times what I tell my <laughs> Sandra says, did you just call me Nickelback? Girl. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry for anyone that likes Nickelback. Okay, his songs are really catchy. But um, so <laughs> so no, okay, so Zandra, actually for you, what I would do is to to get over that fear is you need to write like um a song a day, right? Right. Or like write lyrics a day. Oh, I can't remember who the artist it was, but there was a musical artist that that um, I was reading an interview that she did, and she said that um, she was afraid that her songs weren't any good. So what she would do is she would just like create a song every single day, just like uh, Seinfeld said, "Hey, I'm going to write a joke every single day. It doesn't have to be any good." So then that takes that that pressure off of you, and then you have 365 songs, and maybe. 12 of them are really good, but then you've been able to create that diversity in you. And then every single day, you're going to start to play with something different. So um, recommendations for you is quantity, not quality. Zandra, that's, that's going to be my big recommendation for you. So Zandra again says, fear a major player in my music. I'm afraid every song I write sounds the same and just has different lyrics. Well, here's the good thing, Zandra. Your lyrics are different. So you've got that going for you. Gold star there. And your music will, um, I haven't, I can't speak to that because I haven't heard your music. But I do 100% believe that if you focus on making more music and less folk, less beating yourself over the head with the quantity that you will come out of it with a very diverse palette. Um, Kim says, my fear is finishing. Will it turn out like expected? What will I do next? Will another job come around? That's a big one too, Kim. Um, finishing. So for me, oftentimes I'll get uh, really far into, into a project 
And then I'll decide that I want something new and shiny and I want to walk, work on a new and shiny project. Um, so for me, again, I had that rule. Now, this doesn't really speak to your fear, but I had that rule that if I wanted to start a new project, I was allowed to, but I had to finish an old one prior. Um, so will it turn out like expected? What will I do next? Will another job come around? And the answer to that is maybe it won't turn out like expected. And oftentimes my paintings don't turn out like expected, but I do still enjoy them. Um, and oftentimes they took a completely different direction than I intended just because I was in the flow and the creative process and that's where it led me. And I think that's okay. I think that I'm okay with that. So I think coming to terms with the fact that it doesn't always come out like expected is okay. Um, but Kim, do you have a problem with your paint, with your creations, your stained glass after you've created them, you know? Um, so for the most part, I think that you're going to be happy with the work that you've created once you've finished. So again, it's just redirecting yourself from that fear and focusing on something else, like focusing on the creations that I've made that I have been happy with, right? And focusing on that, say, there's no reason for me to worry. And you know what? If I mess up, I can just replace a piece. You know, there's, there's always something that can be done. I've... Oh, guys, I have this for you. Okay. You know what's really crazy is when you mess up on something and then you punch a hole in it. So, so the mess up was I completed this painting and I had to punch a hole in it. And I had to fix it with fabric glue and whatnot, and then I had to come over here and repaint it. You can only see if you look really close, but I messed this up. This has got a hole in it, and so I don't like to transport my paintings because oftentimes they'll fall off my cart, and I'll run over them with my cart, and then I'll punch a hole in them with a rock or whatever, and then I have to spend hours going through and fixing it. So I know the disappointment of messing something up, but I think that sometimes there's merit to having a good story about how frustrated you are when you have to fix it. <laughs> because it sucks. But you can usually either fix it or start new. And then the next time, so like let's say you do mess up on something. The next time you go through and make it, it's going to take you a lot less time because you already have it mapped out and planned, which sucks because you're still investing more time. But the fear, the fear, you know, there's there's always a way to get over it. Um, what will you do next, Kim? Oh, Kim, I know you have more ideas for projects. I'll always burn in inside. Um Will another job come around? And yes, the next job will come around. So, I mean, I think, again, it's just knowing that those questions are only attracting more of what the questions create, right? So, like, will it turn out like expected? Maybe, maybe not. What will I do next? I don't know. You'll probably think of something. Will another job come around? Well, of course it will. You've, you've, you're well known. You have clients coming in. And I think that trusting that that flow will continue to you also enables it to have it continue, right? So it's a little bit like a self-fulfilling prophecy, a little bit, but mixed in with like the law of attraction, right? So Zandra, <laughs> I'm just reading Zandra's comment at me calling her Nickelback. I'm sorry, girl. <laughs> it's just making me laugh. Um, so anyway, like I, I really feel like whatever you expect is what's going to come, right? So also, if you're afraid of something that makes it really more important to redirect your fear, right? So whatever you expect is going to come to you. But if you can just take your mind off of whatever that negative thing is and just put it on something that makes you happy in the moment, it will all turn out. A-okay, babies. Anyway, so resistance is fueled by fear, right? So that fear can often stop us from picking up and working on our project. Uh, 
And again, like I said, this is really important stuff for me to read right now. I've got this giant project I'm working on and, you know, there's, there's certain ways I can just dance around it. I can dance around it all day. I can make excuses all day for why I haven't worked on it in a week, but you got to carve out that time. All right. So resistance only opposes in one direction. This is page 17. Um, also, Zandra, I really hope you're not upset with me. I was just teasing you. Please don't be mad. <laughs> and Kim, let me know what is it you're working on right now? Do you have any big projects coming up? I know that you do. So resistance obstructs movement only from a lower sphere to a higher. So let's say you want to go backtrack and work on a project of the scope or scale in which you've already been accomplished. That's okay. You're not afraid of that because you already know that you've done that. And resistance can't lie to you and tell you that that's something that you're not capable of because you've seen yourself do it. So that's also why we can get such a big high off of completing projects of the scope of which we've never done. That's also why it can be harder. That's also why it, you know, it can take a lot more effort emotionally rather than, you know. So anyway, resistance obstructs movements only from a lower sphere to a higher. Whether it be to pursue a calling in the arts, launching an innovative enterprise, evolving to a higher station morally, ethically, or spiritually. So don't worry. If I don't care about it, my objective seems easy. Can I repeat that again? If I really don't care about it, it seems attainable and easy. And take a minute and just think about that. Has there ever been a project you took on that you really didn't care about the result or you knew that you could do it? Like you really didn't think twice about it. You're like, okay, yeah, I can do that. It's not a big deal. And it seems like an easy thing to do. Whereas if it were you five years ago, maybe it wouldn't be the same feeling, right? So maybe that's an accomplishment that you should write down for yourself and say, hey, here's all the things that I have done before. Oh, this is a good one for Kim. So Kim, write down... <laughs> So Kim and Zandra, Zandra's out there saying words, so true. So write down a list of the things you've accomplished in the last year, two years, three years, four years, five, ten, whatever. Write it down and look back. And after you've written down these accomplishments, think about how you felt prior to accomplishing them. And tell me that this isn't true. <laughs> you really can't. So Kim says, still working on the third panel window set. I guess that would be a triptych. I never think twice. I can do it if I put my mind to it. Yay, at a girl. Yes, um, by the way, I know I was working on that triptych and I totally abandoned it. I'm almost done with it, which I think means that you bringing that up is a prompt for me to have that be my next project I work on. Yes, I have a three panel painting. I got most of the way done and I abandoned it. <laughs> the things we do to ourselves. So that's another thing, right? Like uh, I get most of the way through the project and then I'm like, yeah, no, this is too hard. I'm not working on it. Even though it's like, I only have 10% of the work left and it's like, how accomplished would I feel? So that's another thing that we shouldn't be doing. But Kim, oh my gosh, so the three panel window set. So I wanna see an update on that. Hopefully you'll 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 get done with it and show me or maybe show me some, some uh, work in progress. So Kim says, I have dozens of projects started. So there's your answer to that one fear, Kim. What am I gonna work on next? You've got those dozens of projects that you need to finish. Um, so that's that fear is unfounded. Yes. And Kim also says, I never think twice. I can do it if I put my mind to it. I feel like you need to have that on a quote above your workstation. I never think twice. I can do it if I put my mind to it. I really like that. I think that's really good. Beautiful. So you just answered your own questions. I love it. I love it. All right. So 
Retrain yourself to enjoy a challenge. Here's an action item. Write down an activity you succeeded at, yet were resistant to. Oh, I already told you guys to do that. Zandra says, that's really good. I second the motion. I believe Zandra's referring to that. I never think twice. I can do it if I put my mind to it. In fact, Kim, you're coming up with some pretty darn good quotes all the time. So very good. Yep. So guys, again, write down an activity that you succeeded at yet we're really resistant to. I'm gonna tell you Zandra and Kim, and I'm gonna do this myself. Um, you know, I, I have plenty of stories for that, and I'm sure that once you write down one, you're gonna think of another, and then you're gonna think of another, and I'm gonna encourage you guys to write down all of them. So if you guys can think of one right now, go ahead and put that in the chat. What is an activity that you succeeded at, yet you were resistant to actually doing? I wanna hear from you because we call that an accomplishment, baby. Oh man. Next up we have page 18. Resistance is the most powerful at the finish line. Ooh, this is gonna be really good to underline those unfinished projects Kim and I were just talking about. Also, Zandra, I really wanna hear a song that you've done. Um, you've described your singing to me. You've described your projects to me. I would absolutely love to hear one of your projects, Zandra. I'm just dying, I'm just dying to see your creations, your little babies. All right, resistance is most powerful at the finish line. Um, last week, Stephen Pressfield in the beginning of the book was talking about how his incantation of the muse from Odysseus, you know, the, uh, oh shit, Homer's Odyssey, uh, was part of like something that he read to himself every day. And it was funny because Zandra was saying that it seemed a little convoluted and didn't really make sense to her. So now we have another Odysseus parable. <laughs> So he really likes um, Homer's Odyssey, which is cool. It's a great story. Um, so this entire uh, first paragraph here on page 18 is about Odysseus and how they almost get home after their long journey. And he falls asleep and he has like the winds. What is it? The, the adverse winds that king aeolus had bottled up for odysseus and the his they were like thinking he was hiding treasure from them so his crew opened the bag and then blew him off course again um and so that underscores the title of this page which is resistance is the most powerful at the finish line and the danger is greatest when the finish line is in sight stephen pressfield says at this point resistance knows we're about to beat it it hits the panic button. It marshals one last assault and slams us with everything it's got. And I was just telling you guys about that three panel triptych piece that I was painting. I got almost done. And I just put it off to the side. I was like, yeah, this is too hard yada, 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 all the stories I told myself. This is hitting me hard in the heart today, you guys. This this book, um, good pick. Uh, Zandra and Kim in the chat helped me pick out this book. Um, and gosh, these books we've been reading have been really on point. And honestly, like I'm really grateful to have this group to come in and read with you guys because this is getting me in my heart. We've got lots of action in the chat. Zandra says she has stuff on this channel, just a couple of lives, but it gets the point across. Oh, so you have a YouTube channel or um, you have a, a channel on online somewhere. Okay, I would love to see that. Zandra says word, the finish line is the big scary. Kim says she's loving welding class. She started September 14th and she it runs through November 30th. She can't wait to marry stained glass and welding together. Spinners for the yard and yard art. Kim, that sounds amazing. I absolutely think that that is a beautiful marriage of skill sets and I'm I'm really excited. Excuse me, I'm drinking coffee. And, um, 
I think that's going to be really beautiful, Kim. I, I <laughs> I'm super jealous. Actually, I've been wanting to learn how to weld for a really long time. So congrats. Oh, we have Jawa. Jawa's back. We've had Jawa in a, a few of our other our other live streams. Welcome back. Jawa says hi. Hope all is well with this group. It's cool to see you're still doing videos. I've never heard of this book though. Well, welcome, Jawa. It's good to see your your screen name here again. Uh, I know we're we. It's been a minute, yeah. So this is our third book. I think you came on when we were doing um, the Artist's Way, Jawa, uh, back earlier this year. Um, so this book is called The War of Art. It's by Stephen Pressfield, and I think it was written in like 2000. We figured out it's a pretty good book. I would I would definitely encourage you to buy it. Um, and also, please come back and join us. It's great to see you. Zondra says, yep, it's kind of like Artist's Way 2, the terminal velocity part. It knows you are escaping. Zondra says, Jawa, hey, homie. <laughs> uh, Zondra says, Kim, that's very exciting. Welding terrifies me. You go, girl. Zondra says, I have like five videos or something I haven't posted since 2015. Well, Zondra, that means that I think you... Zandra, you should definitely look, rewatch your 2015 videos, and then look at your current content and just pat yourself on the back for all that you've accomplished and how far you've come. Because I know that there's going to be a huge difference for you. Uh, Kim says, welcome back, Jawa. Yeah, so I'm really excited. So I hope this is getting... So let me ask you guys, on Sundays when we're done with our live stream, do you go out from here feeling like a little bit more refreshed? And do you actually take on one of your creative projects with some new zest? Um, because that's what happens for me is after these live streams, I'm like, I feel really empowered. I feel very inspired. Um... Kim's asking Zondra what the channel is because she wants to check it out. Zondra, I also want to see the channel. And Zondra's answering my questions. She says, yes, she does go out with New Zest. That's beautiful. I'm really happy because that's what happens for me, too. Because Zondra says, sometimes it's hard for me to focus because she's getting so inspired. Oof, you just got to pick one. That's the big thing. The big, uh, another form of resistance that we can have is there's too much to do. Just pick one. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be the right one. Just kick that perfectionism in the ass and just pick one. What's the first thing you think of? Go do that. Um, Jawa says, it's so similar to Artist's Way. That's cool. I still need to finish the Artist's Way. Well, Jawa, those videos are back there for you if you want to follow along. The, the Artist's Way videos are on in a folder on their own on my channel, their own playlist. Also, I will be doing the Artist's Way again next year if you're interested um, in finishing it along with a, a live group. Um, Kim says, yes, I feel empowered and do some art projects fueled with beer. Beautiful. What a Sunday other than like a beer art day. Zondra says, Jawa, they're both creativity books and definitely some parallels, but this is a different voice. Artist way again. Yay, Zondra says. Jawa says he'll look into purchasing this book though. And oh, Zondra's channel is just Zondra, which is awesome. Cool, cool, cool. I'm going to check out your channel, girl. Okay. All right, sweet. So resistance is most powerful at the finish line. Oops. Resistance is most powerful at the finish line. So the danger is greatest when the finish line is in sight, just as, you know, uh, Odysseus and his crew were in sight of their home and the crew opened the bag of the winds and then they were off again and it took them ages and ages to get back. So... You've got to keep up that momentum, stay true to yourself. That's again why I like that little journal where every single day I write some at least one thing that I've done for my arts business in that journal. And it really keeps me feeling like I've got momentum going, especially when I'm starting to feel down on myself. I know that I haven't gone one single day without doing something. So stay the course. Don't let your guard down. The professional must be alert for this counterattack. Be wary at the end. Don't open that bag of wind. Next, we're on page 19. Resistance recruits allies. Interesting. Resistance, by definition, is self-sabotage. And there's a parallel peril 
that must also be guarded against, sabotage by others. Now bear with me on this page because I found some resistance in myself while reading it, even though I do have life experiences that support this, sabotage by outer influences. Um, so when a writer begins to overcome her resistance, in other words, when she actually starts to write, she may find that those close to her begin acting strange. They might become moody or sullen. They might get sick. They might accuse the awakening writer of changing or not being the person she was. The closer these people are to the awakening writer, the more bizarrely they will act and the more emotion they will put behind their actions. I'm going to stop reading here. And again, I'm going to reiterate. I had, I felt resistance to reading this next line. And keep in mind that this not might not actually be intentional by the other person, right? So let's keep in mind that it might not be intentional by the other person. Zondra says word. They are trying to sabotage her. The reason they are struggling consciously or unconsciously against their own resistance, the reason is that they are struggling consciously or unconsciously against their own resistance. And even in Stephen Pressfield's words, it might not be a conscious sabotage. Um, I have had many instances, um, uh, and typically this this comes up when I'm dating a person or like I have a, a partner that I'm living with. If I'm like single, this doesn't come up for me because all of my friends, I already have really strong boundaries with. So um, this could be that you don't have, you're, you're changing the, the distribution of time in a relationship. And a lot of times people aren't okay with that. So um, this has come up for me when, like, and this is really interesting too, uh, because again, it could be, it could be conscious and it could be unconscious, right? Like there was an instance where I had a partner that just played like a bunch of video games. And then when I started painting a lot, even though they were playing video games, they were still upset that I was painting. So I didn't quite understand that. So I think that might have just been like, wait, you're doing something constructive and I'm not being constructive. So now I have to get upset that you're not available. I don't know what it is. I think that might be more like an unhealthy relationship. So keep in mind, this will put a spotlight on your unhealthy relationships, right? So if you haven't already set strict boundaries about things, um, and then there was an instance to where I had a partner who had plenty of their own side projects. And because I was constantly working on my project, um, you know, I think for me, there is an imbalance in the relationship and not giving them any time. However, I was making really good progress and headway. And then it became an issue to where they got upset at me for working on my business. And so for me, I'm trying to separate it out as like, okay, was this really just an unhealthy relationship? Was this them actually sabotaging me intentionally? But I think for the most part, it was all unintentional. It's just needing to set healthy boundaries. And I think that that's what this is um, shining a light on. However, weigh this, weigh, again, weigh this information against your own heart and see how it feels to you. Uh, Zondra says word again. Kim, look for the thumbnail, the blue hair. Oh, she's trying to find her channel. Um, Jawa says the unconscious mind is so mysterious to me. And, you know, I think it's fascinating. I agree with you. That's why I like, I really like to read about these because I like to find ways to hack my bad habits. I like to find ways to hack my subconscious. I like to find ways to hack into better behavior or more behavior hacking into ways to where I can have a behavior that I more, more consistently would like. Right. So Zondra says change scares people. It either shines a light on what they haven't and could do, or like you said, redistribution of time. So they worry if they don't have the time and that they don't have the love sort of. Right. Yeah. So I think um, expounding on what you're saying they worry that they don't have the time. They worry that they don't have the love. So again, it might just be um, 
you know, you're shining a light on the fact that, you know, maybe they're used to getting the attention, the undivided attention from you and they're not used to it. So then they're going to be like, Hey, you're changing because now I'm no longer the center of your attention from, 5 to 9 p.m., you know, now I have to settle for an hour or two, right? So, yeah, Zandra, I, I think that that's, I, I really wanted to, like, I'm glad that you're you're chiming in on this because, to me, this hit, like, a, a soft spot in me. So, Zandra says, no longer the center of attention. Bingo. Yeah, right, because a lot of times we look for love in other people, and a lot of times we feel like attention is what love is, Right? So again, back to Jawa's comment, the unconscious mind is so mysterious to me, <laughs> right? So, so you're not only trying to deal with your resistance, right? Now there's another person's in the mix, which is why it's like, um, I find for me at this current time, I'm just enjoying being single, you know? <laughs> Oi. Just because then you have somebody else's emotions in the mix, right? And like, then you have to figure out how to, how to tactfully go about, you know, making sure, you know, you're giving yourself what you need and being, doing your best to, you know, be the best partner you can be, which I think a lot of times can be a skewed anyway. Well, we're not talking about that part of the topic, but I think you know where I can go. Okay, so the closer people are to the awakening writer, the more bizarrely they will act and the more emotion they will put behind their actions. They are trying to sabotage her. And the reason is that they're struggling, whether it be consciously or unconsciously, against their own resistance. The awakening writer's success becomes a reproach to them. If she can beat these demons, why can't they? Often couples or close friends, even entire families, will enter into tacit compacts whereby each individual pledges unconsciously to remain mired in the same slough in which she and all of her cronies have become so comfortable. So you're supposed to stay here where I am and you can't grow, essentially. Zandra's in the back saying, yep. So the highest treason a crab can commit is to make a leap for the rim of the bucket. Ooh. The awakening artist must be ruthless, not only with herself, but with others. Once you make your break, you can't turn around for your buddy who catches his crap. <laughs> the best thing you can do for your friend is to get over the wall and keep motating. The best and only thing that one artist can do for another is to serve as an example and inspiration. In other words, you have to pull your own ass up and out. Zondra says the crab metaphor got me in the feels. I know, right? Because essentially, like, I'm getting out if I can, and you should too. Um, but it's also every crab for himself, right? So Kim says, love the awakening artist quote. Okay, so the awakening artist must be ruthless, not only with herself, but with others. You have to, in, in other words, like, you know, you can set boundaries. And I think it's important to say you can set boundaries um, calmly um and firmly without being cruel but a lot of times it what we think or misconstrue as being cruel is to watch them sit there and spin their wheels and try and like talk themselves into receiving more from you than what you're able to provide or give right so um the best and only thing that one artist can do for another is to serve an example and inspiration Woo! All right, you guys, that was, that was, this is another reason why I, I cut this down to, to page 25, because this was a lot to digest, I think. Um, and also we're almost up to the hour here. So we got to boogie through this because I got to geo go babies. So I said, I've definitely experienced this. It can be small. They can feel neglected. They can call you a workaholic. Once you finally begun to enjoy and flow in your work. Again, you guys, I've experienced this in multiple instances, and it sucks, right? 
Jawa says, that makes sense. You need to carve out time for yourself. Exactly, Jawa. It's body, mind, spirit. You have to take care of your body. You have to take care of your mind. You have to take care of your spirit. And for me, my spirit includes my art business. Okay. And in the meantime, until I can survive only on my art business, I've, I've had instances to where um, 50% of my work and my income has come from my art business. And then the other 50% of my work I had to go and get from external employment, right? So for me, my, my spirit is my art. My body includes income that I need to house and nourish myself as well as time for physical activity. And my mind, body, mind, spirit. Yeah, so my mind includes... Um, also having that home to come home to also knowing that I have that food and that I'm financially okay. And my mind includes, you know, further edification. So, and I think that, uh, we get, we get a little skewed on that because body, mind, and spirit is supposed to all be nurtured by yourself, not an external source. And so sometimes people think that, um, that nurturing needs to come from outside of themselves and, not realistic unless you find somebody who's willing to stay in that crab pot with you right Zandra right Kim all right so resistance and procrastination procrastination is the most common manifestation of resistance because it is the easiest to rationalize I'm just going to start tomorrow and as my dear friend Holly says I'll stop procrastinating when I get around to it. Zondra's down there in the, in the chat saying word, probably to my crab pot. So this doesn't work for me. Once I break the momentum, the slide begins. If I procrastinate once, it's much easier for me to press procrastinate again. So the best, it's just like when you're quitting smoking cigarettes, you guys, you can't just light up a procrastination cigarette once because once you've quit for three years and you light up that procrastination cigarette once, now you're really in for that slide. Now it's going to be harder to stop that momentum. Kim says, no crab pot for me. I don't want to get cooked and ate. Exactly. Jawa says, I work nine to five Monday through Friday jobs, so I have to really make time for art. Exactly. I hear you. Yeah, it's it's it can be difficult to carve that time out, um, especially again, like I said, with with having, you know, relationships where they they need to set boundaries. Right. And you even have to have boundaries with yourself. Right. And it's OK to take a day off. Um, but it's also good to, you know, figure out, you know, what is the least amount of artwork that I can create and stay happy? So for me, if I don't make any artwork for about three days, I start to go insane. So for me, I know that at least every other day I need to be actually creating something, painting something, drawing something. Um, so that's another good thing to figure out you guys uh do you know what the least amount of artwork you can make is before you start to feel really really off or crabby or you know sometimes sometimes i can feel angry or depressed or cranky or like everything in the world sucks well it's just because i need to sit down and make some art so i don't know if it's that way for you if it is give me a word in the chat and tell me what your minimum time between art sittings is all right we got a boogie guys so over here to page 22, resistance and procrastination, part two. Sandra says, word. The most perni God dang it. The most pernicious aspect of procrastination is that it can become a habit. We don't just put off our lives today. We put them off till our deathbed. Never forget this very moment we can change our lives. There never was a moment, never will be, when we are without the power to alter our destiny. This second, we can turn the tables on resistance. This second, we can sit down and do our work. Kim says, I have to do something creative every single day. When the time is tight, I art journal. One page at a time. Ooh, I really like that. Yeah, because you can just do a whole page. Beautiful. Zondra says, mine is daily. I'm a real bitch if I don't get a daily art. The never forget hit me hard. So let's say we can sit down and do our work this 
very second. Never forget this very moment we can change our lives. Ooh, one more, resistance and sex. Sometimes resistance takes the form of sex or an obsessive preoccupation with sex. Why sex? Because it provides immediate and powerful gratification. It's an easy fix and it keeps us from doing our work. Okay, this made me laugh. Of course, not all sex is a manifestation of resistance. In my experience, you can tell by the measure of hollowness you feel afterward. The more empty you feel, the more certain you can be that your true motivation was not love or even lust, but resistance. <laughs> Give me a word, guys. All right, Zandra, never forget was something my mom would say. I think she meant it lovingly, but it was sort of her stay in the bucket crab whistle. So this was freeing. Ooh, so now you have a new never forget. Kim, in the, Kim over there says word. <laughs> All right, anybody felt hollow after, you know, like, I know for me, like, I've used, um, like, dating apps or whether or whatever as, like, a distraction, right? So, like, instead of, you know, sitting down and creating my art, I could be, like, on a dating app and, you know, trying to look for that, that hit of attention or maybe a conversation. And that can be a way in which you're, like, at the end, you're just, like, what a giant waste of time. I could have been using this time to, like, be making something really cool. So I, I can at least attest to that. So Zandra says my note on the sex section was, wow, you are such a dude. Okay. <laughs> Jalwa says word to your mother. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. <laughs> Apparently I'm a dude, Zandra, <laughs> because I could totally relate to this page. <laughs> All right. Jalwa and I get it. Jalwa and I get it. It's fine. It's fine, Zandra. <laughs> It applies to some people, though, at least, you know, so that's good. <laughs> Zondra says, oh, I could not relate. <laughs> All right. Well, that's okay. You don't have to. And again, you don't have to relate to everything in this book. But I think that's really funny. <laughs> wow, you're such a dude. <laughs> Resistance and trouble. Kim says, I am a love them and leave them type. I love you guys. <laughs> All right, that was fun. Now I got to go make smart. <laughs> so I think Kim's like, "All right, cool. Time to go to my studio now." <laughs> oh. You guys. So good. All right, resistance and trouble. <laughs> trouble is a faux form of fame. Ill health is a form of trouble. Alcoholism and drug addiction, proneness to accidents, all neuroses, including compulsive screwing up and, see, and such seemingly benign foibles as jealousy, chronic lateness, and the blasting of rap music <laughs> at 110 decibels from your smoke glass 95 Supra. I don't know. I think was that kind of like a stereotype you just threw out there? <laughs> Anything that draws attention to ourselves through pain-free or artificial 